Good morning. This is Ms. Fagutze, and I will be taking you guys through today's lesson, which is under the content area of health, social, and environmental responsibility. Today's topic is about sus substance abuse. So, upon completion of this study unit, you should be able to define what is meant by substance abuse, list the different types and forms of substance abuse, identify the protective measures and learn how to practice them. I also expect you to know where to get help for specific substance abuse, use the knowledge to identify and detect early symptoms of substance abuse, and lastly, I want you to be able to list and explain the factors that may lead to substance abuse. So let's get started. What is it exactly? Um, what exactly is substance abuse? Yes, that is almost that is correct. Sorry. So substance abuse refers to using legal and illegal substances in the wrong way. The definition is on your book, page 114, spot on. So substance abuse is also known as drug abuse. Yes, a drug is defined as any chemical substance that changes the way that you film. Okay, can someone tell me of a substance that they take in to help them feel better? Yes, coffee mixture helps you feel better. If you have the cough, if you're having flu, that is awesome. Yes, that is a good example. And so is painkillers. That is great. Okay, now that we know that it's a substance that changes the way that you're feeling, we have to talk about the legal and the illegal drugs. Some drugs are legal and freely available, like coffee mixtures and painkillers. And some drugs can only be illegal, can only be legal, sorry, when prescribed by a doctor. Okay? And then we have just plain legal, illegal drugs. These are just illegal, not allowed to have them. If you get if you caught having them. Yes, prison, that's correct. So, <clears throat> all drugs have the potential of being harmful to a person, right? And they're also addictive. Let us move on. Now we're going to talk about the different types of drugs. We have talked about um, coffee mixtures and painkillers. So, excuse me, with coffee mixtures and painkillers, we will classify those ones as medicinal drugs. They are taken because you're suffering from something and they help you feel better. But then on the other hand, we have what we call recreational drugs. These are drugs that are just purely for the purpose of pleasure. No one is sick here. People are just taking them for fun. Okay. Under these recreational drugs we have three types of them so we have opiates depressant and stimulants right in your book it's it states very well which one is which and how you identify them that is for you to read and for me to find out if you have read that okay anyway um there are ways in which substances like drugs are taken into the body system the first one is swallowing, that is just putting it in your mouth and swallowing down, snorting through your nose, smoking, injection, and injecting it into your bloodstreams. Right, this brings us to a very exciting activity that is created here. So, <clears throat> in this table, you will see that they are the substances on the first column, which is your cigarette painkillers for a headache heroin, dacha, ecstasy, alcohol, and cocaine. So what you're going to do now is to indicate whether this drug is medicinal or recreational. And then you're going to say if it's illegal or legal. And then you will have to state if it's an opiate, depressant, or stimulant. And also, you will be required to state how the substance is taken. Do you swallow it? Do you smoke it? Do you snort it? 
and then you will also have to say in what form does the drug come is it a liquid is it powder is it a herb that is for you to know for me to find out if you really know it all right let us move forward you have 10 minutes to do this activity and then we will discuss it we will mark it in no time okay now that we have taken that activity out of the way let us look at the symptoms of substance abuse all right because there is really not much that you can do and hide it you know the saying what happens in the dark always come to light all right so substance abuse show itself in various symptoms so it does manifest right so it can manifest physically into your body we can see it we can spot that mm -mm, you are doing something with it or it can change or alter your behavior so those are now called behavioral symptoms okay this is another activity now you have to list five physical and five behavioral just to clarify the difference physical symptoms are the ones that you can actually see and pinpoint and say okay this person might be taking this drug because their eyes look red they look teary their pupils are dilated all of those they are gaining a lot of weight they are losing a lot of weight those are just on the physical aspect of their being and then we have the one that we call behavioral symptoms now these symptoms are just on your behavior on your attitude how are you relating to others are you more aggressive are you angrier do you have like mood swings or you know i think that just highlights it so what i want you to do is do this one really quickly because it's already in your textbook but you need to memorize this you need to know this for the test there's going to be a test so you need to yeah and then so it's just five five of each right and then in pairs you're going to look at activity 2.1 on page 121 that activity you're just going to talk to your partner that you're going to pair up with we're going to do this very quickly and very 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 quietly guys because we do not have enough time let's do it and then we'll talk about it as a group as the whole class once you have talked to your partner about it okay um now we're going to look at the factors that contribute to drug abuse there are three different types of factors that may contribute to drug abuse we have the intrapersonal influences interpersonal influences and the community and social influences with the intrapersonal this just involves the individual what does the individual think of drug abuse substance abuse how do they feel about it do they feel like it's something great do they believe it's nice so those are your intrapersonal that is just within the individual and then we have something else that is called interpersonal now it's not in now it's a little bit external but close external so that is talks to the family the friends how home is you see that is it and then we have something we call community and social influences what are the rules around that in the community what does the community think of people that do that are they cool with it you know those are the kind of influences that we are talking about it and yes it is that time again we have talked a lot activity on page 125 all right now this brings us to almost the end of the session we're just going to look at two things really quickly protective factors that may reduce the likelihood of substance abuse okay uh the book gives you a plenty plenty of these examples but just to name a few is that you have to choose your friends really carefully right another thing is do not make um bad decisions just in the heat of the moment because you're feeling angry and you're like let me just cool down just think of what you would do when you are in your right state of mind also be media wise okay not everything you see in tv is what it is right and then we have what we call the prevention measures i always say if you don't want to stop then don't start at all so <clears throat> On the screen, we have Narcotics Anonymous Drug Anonymous uh, Narcotics Anonymous Drug Addiction Help with the numbers on the screen. This is how you help someone. 
now we've now mapped we've that And then the whole there is homework on page 128 on your spot on textbook if there are no questions that is the end of today's lesson thank you